Hello everyone, my name is André Almeida, I am a current engineer at the Open Source Consultancy Collabora and I'm here today to talk about Fultex 2, a new Fultex Cisco. So today uh, we'll cover uh, first of all what is Fultex and how it works internally on the kernel side, uh, some limitations that were found and how we want to fix these limitations with a new Cisco, the Fultex 2. So, uh, Futex means fast user mutexes and is a syscall to provide the user space means to create several synchronization mechanisms like um, mutexes, conditional variables, barriers, and semaphores. And the semantics on the kernel side is very simple. All the logic should be implemented on the user space. So, uh, for the mutex case, for instance, uh, if you didn't find uh, the value that you were expecting, like uh, log free, um, you just sleep and wait. And on the other side, if you are releasing the lock, you do a full text wake. So you wake uh, some waiters, someone that is waiting for the lock. It's aiming to be very, very fast, so no syscall is needed on the uncontended case. Um, this is very important nowadays for some platforms since um, uh, after a lot of hardware bug mitigations, doing syscall is very expensive. And here we can find, we can see an example of how to implement a very basic mutex using footex. So on the locks, uh, the first thing we do, we create an integer of 32 bits that will hold a value and this value will set the state of the lock so we initialize it, it with lock free and then on the lock side what we do is we try to do a compare exchange operation atomically so we want to replace the lock free value with the lock taken value if we manage to do that that means that the lock was free and this thread was able to take it so we don't need to call full text, we just um, continue the execution of the code. However, if you fail this compare exchange, that means that the lock was taken. So now we are calling, we need to call full text, uh, the full text is called. So the first argument is uh, the address of our value, because this is how we identify full text objects inside the kernel by this address. So, using the address, you can uniquely identify any full text for any process. The first argument is the operation that you want to do. In this case, is full text wait. And because you want to sleep while waiting. So, and the third argument is the expected value. Here is lock taken. So, what that does mean? Uh, for instance, if the value has changed uh, between you try to do the compare exchange, and when you issue the syscall. So uh, since this can happen and we don't want to sleep when the lock is free, uh, the kernel checks if, uh, before sleeping, the kernel checks if you are sleeping on the right condition, if you are sleeping on the case where the, lock is, the value is lock taken. So this is for the lock side. On the unlock side, the first thing you do is to atomically set the value as lock free, and then uh, you call full text again, but this time with the full text wake operation. You can see that you are using the same address because this is how we identify full text. And now the third argument is not anymore the expected value, but now it's the number of waiters that you want to wake. On the mutex example, uh, the only, only value that makes sense is one, since if you wake more than one, they will just fight for the lock, and who gets the lock will continue, and he who uh, didn't get the lock uh, will sleep again. So this will wait, uh, just wait, waste some processor time. But for other operations, like if you are implementing a barrier, uh, you can use uh, the max number of threads in your system because you want to wake everyone at the same time. 
and also um, this example can be optimized to just call full text wake if you know there is someone really waiting for it so I was simplifying um, the interface this is the complete interface and um, as you can see it's a multiplexed one that means that all operations happens in the same Cisco the first argument is the user address uh, the address of the integer that holds the value that holds the state and the second argument is the operational code and you can also add some flags here if you want to change the behavior uh, for instance uh, if you are uh, doing a uh, multi-thread application uh, where you share the uh, memory space you can use the flag footex private to do some um, access optimizations however if you, you are creating a multi-process application uh, you can do that because you probably need to create a shared memory variable. So uh, the value uh, on the wait case is the expected value, but on the wake case is the number of threads you want to wake. And the timeout operation is for if you don't want to wait forever, you can add a timeout for the full text wait. And there is also the user address 2 and the val 3. Uh, arguments that I not cover here because um, there are for other more complex operations. Um, so Futex is from 2002. It was created by Rusty Russo uh, when he was working at IBM, but for a long time um, it has been maintained by Thomas. Um, also, GLBC doesn't expose a nice wrapper for some reasons. The first reason is that it's not easy to create a nice wrapper that checks the semantics and the types of the arguments when you are working with a multiplexed interface and also because Fotex wasn't really meant to be used by uh, a lot of developers uh, Fotex was meant to be used uh, only by those developers of core parts of the user space like C libraries uh, but also you can use uh, we found users of the footex for instance um, if you have a corner case uh, that you want to implement that is not covered by the ptrad implementation or for instance if you are doing some low level compatibility like you are creating some uh, emulation tools so if you want to use uh, footex you you need to use the Cisco function of GDBC and use and then use the number of the Cisco Futex. So now I want to talk about how the Futex works on the kernel side. So for the wait, um, the first thing you do is to check if the value on the user space address matches what the user is expecting. So if this is not true, you just return immediately with an error. However, if this is true, uh, you will sleep. But before doing that, you register yourself on the wait table so the waker thread will know where to find you. And then you are ready to sleep, and then you eventually you will wake. This can be for uh, some reasons. For instance, it could be just a spurious wake because the task scheduler put you to do some work, but you don't have any work to do, so you just sleep again. It could be a timeout. In this case, you need to wake, remove yourself from the table, and exit. It could be also um, because you, this thread got a signal, so it could be, for instance, a CQ or a SIGA port, and then you need to exit the thread. So you remove yourself from the table and get back to your space, but uh, it could be the normal case, where is, um, the way someone did the full text wake, and now you are you are awake and need to go to your space. Um, on the other side, uh, the full text wake, for it's very simple. You just go to the full text table, to the wage table, and for each full text that is in the same address that's you, you just wake until you match the number of wakes that the user space has asked you to do. Now, this is a simple timeline of how full text works. On the top you have a thread that, in this case, is a mutex. So in the top you have a, a thread that doesn't have the lock. 
so it will do a full text wait and then you go to the kernel and the kernel will schedule the thread so basically we put it to sleep in the meanwhile the thread on the bottom that has a lock just release it so it will call full text wake and go to the kernel the kernel will find out uh, which thread to wake and we will issue a wake up operation and then uh, both threads will just exit from the kernel and continue the work and now let's see how the hash table works so in the full text, current full text implementation you have a global hash table with a lot of hash buckets and then um, when you ask for wait um, the hash function will assign you a bucket and you will add you on a waiting list in there um, but uh, for the same address all threads will get on the same bucket so this makes the waker life easier however uh, you can also have hash conflicts so in this case uh, different address will be on the same bucket so now let's have a look on some problems that the current interface has so the first thing uh, to notice is that we didn't got we didn't get any new feature on the full decks since 2008 uh, this is because the code is very hard to modify and it's very tricky to maintain this was said by the maintainers themselves um, and full text is very important uh, for all sorts of systems and it's uh, important to provide safe uh, multi-threading and safe locking so if there's a bug on full text this will give problems for a lot of people. Also, the current code has some legacy features that uh, no one uses anymore, and it's kind of tricky to modify the code to add a new feature without breaking old features. And besides that, we also have the problem of NUMA awareness. So, on the single, single socket case, there is no problem on having a global hash table because um, this hash table will be somewhere in the memory and the CPU can easily access it. However, on a NUMA architecture, we will have a lot of sockets and the, glo the global hash table will need to be on some nodes. And for every node that doesn't have the table, it will be, it will be very costly to get the information uh, for the table, since the memory access is not uniform. So another problem that we have on the current interface is the lack of determinism for real-time users. So as I showed before, um, we can have hash collisions on the table and it's not easy or not possible for the user space to know how many, how many full taxes are on the same bucket that we are operating. So that means that it's very hard to predict how, many how much time a full tax operation will take. The fact that um, the user space needs to provide um, 32 bits um, user address is a hard requirement. You can use other other size of integer. So um, maybe we, if we could have 80 or 16 bits um, integers, it could help embedded systems that uh, maybe don't have so much memory. And also for the mutex case you will probably use for um, like three values so 80 bits is enough for that so maybe you can fit more things on your cache and also uh, 64 bit full taxes could be useful if you want to to wait on a pointer so here is a list of uh, a lot of attempted features that we got on these years that wasn't uh, merged so the first one is adaptive spinning full taxes. Uh, we got two takes, one in 2010, another one in 2016. So the idea here is for um, if you if the kernel knows that the lock owner is running, uh, maybe it's not worth to to the waiter to sleep. Maybe it is worth to just spinning, so you can. Um, avoid the overhead of sleeping and the contact switch and the second feature uh, 2016 as well is uh, the attached full taxes 
and the hash table per process and this was made to try to solve the NUMA problem because um, here um, each process will have its own table that means that when you create a new process on uh, the creation uh, the kernel will allocate some memory for the hash table so uh, since um, the process data is attached to the node where the process is running uh, you will solve this locality memory memory locality problem and also uh, last year we got uh, variable size for taxes so this was um, attempt to implement uh, to fix that issue that I just talked about of the fixed sizes so this would allow different sizes on the on, for footex and uh, we also got way to multiple footexes that I will explain later and the footex swap that is uh, uh, we, we got this patch this year uh, it was aimed for some consumer producer uh, specific loads so the footex weight multiple was developed by Collabra and Valve and is the semantics is to weight on a lot of footex at the same time and on the first uh, waiter on the first footex that issue on wake you will wake so um, this operation can be found on other operation systems as well and uh, for us is very useful for um, creating the emulation layer between uh, Windows and Linux because uh, the first attempt that Valve did was to use the EventFD interface to simulate this behavior but unfortunately EventFD didn't, doesn't scale so, so well with a lot of waiters and also uh, some games could cause file descriptor exhaustion since they could create a lot of um, uh, lock objects so the Fotex interface seemed natural to implement this and this is what was done using Fotex to implement this semantics and we got some nice results for instance on the temperator running over Proton that is a compatibility layer that, that allows you to run Windows games on Linux we got 4% less CPU utilization and 80% less calls to spin locks on the kernel so that means that we uh, could allow the kernel to do some proper work instead of just spinning so after talking about all those limitations and about all those features that weren't able to be merged on the old interface um, this is the solution that uh, was proposed by Thomas, Peter and Florian on the mail list to create a new API from scratch so the first thing uh, that you notice here is that um, the interface is not multiplex anymore and this um, basically will make uh, the life of the kernel developers and glibc developers easier and if you want to know more about the benefits of not creating a multiplex at Cisco uh, I recommend you to check the 2020 Linux Plumbridge conference there's a talk by Christian and Alexa where they talk about extensible syscalls and why multiplexing a syscall lead us to some headaches on the past so we also uh, on this interface we have flags for NUMA if you want to do a NUMA war operation for the size because on the new interface um, you can choose the size of footex so for instance you can use an 80-bit footex and then uh, use tell to the kernel using a footex size 8 um, that you the size of your uh, footex you can also use shared to tell to the kernel that is a shared footex and a flag for a clock ID to specify if you want to operate on monotonic or real-time clock and here is this uh, interface for wake and wait um, you can see that they are very similar to what we had before uh, the way you have the address the number of uh, wakers that number of wakes that you want to perform and the flags on the wait side again the address the expected value uh, flags and the timeout um, and here is the interface for the wait on multiple 
uh, is called weight V because it's uh, vectorized weight. So the first argument will be a pointer to an array, uh, array of waiters. So each waiter will have this, the address, the expected value again, and the flags because uh, you can have different sizes on this array. So, and then you will have the number of waiters, the flags, and the timeout. And I didn't cover the compare IQ operation here because it's kind of uh, different semantics, but basically it's about uh, requeuing uh, waiters from one address to another one. The important thing here is that this, this interface already has six arguments, that is the limit of syscall for some architectures. So we can't add uh, more arguments to this interface. So now I want to explain how we are solving the NUMA, wares, the NUMA awareness problem. So for the NUMA awareness um, um, call, the user address will just point to an integer like before, but for a NUMA operation, the user address will point to a um, struct. And as before, this address will be used to identify, uniquely identify a full text. So this struct will have two fields. The first one is the expected value, and the second one is a hint. On the NUMA flag semantics, this hint can be either minus one, where that means that you want to operate on the current node where you are running, but you can also exp ex uh, specify from zero to the max of NUMA nodes uh, the number of the node where you want to operate, because uh, maybe you want to share a full text with another node, or maybe you are migrated, so this is how you specify on which node you want to operate. Um, and also the, all those val values members will be naturally aligned. So before we used to have a single global hash table, but now we will have local hash tables, one per each socket. So this will solve the problem of memory locality for NUMA, uh, NUMA architectures. So this is the interface that was proposed on the mailing list and also on the Linux Plum conference and this is the interface that I'm implementing. So what I have done right now is the weight and wake and the also the weight, the vectorized weight and the timeout is also working. Um, what, I'm, what, I need, what I'm working right now um, is to implement the shared full taxes and what I have quite kind of done but I need more testing is the normal wear and the variable size and for the future I need to do the compare IQ operation. Um, I will send a patch soon as I have a lot of features together because um, this will uh, help us to identify if the architecture is working instead of sending in small pads. So if you want to see the pads, watch closely the real-time mailing list because as proposed by Steven on the Linux plumbers, um, the real time will be a nice place to testing and to play with the new interface. So thanks everyone for listening to me and if you want to get in touch, just send me an email and we can talk about Texas. Thank you.